Welcome to the Pocatello Business Podcast, the only Pocatello podcast focused on providing profits for Pocatello people. If you love our town and love small business, you are in the right place. We interview local legends, learn business, and have way too much fun doing it. You're listening to the Pocatello Business Podcast with your friend, host, all-around great guy, and owner of New Clean Commercial Cleaning, Spencer Ward. All right, everyone, we are back with Pocatello Business Podcast with Jared Barton. He is a medical nutrition counselor and health coach at Physicians uh, Optimal Health and Immediate Care, but pretty much across the street at Get Well number three, right? Right, yep, yep. But yeah, type of thing. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, so Jared, he was born born and raised in uh, Utah, and he's been here in, uh, in uh, Pocatello for the past 18 years. He got his degree at ISU in dietetics, right? Yep, dietetics. Very good. And he's been helping people with their health journey uh, and weight loss journeys, uh, you know, pretty pretty much since then, right? Yeah, yeah. I did last. Uh, I've been doing this 14 years uh, since the year after I graduated from college. My I met Dr. Willie, who's our medical director, my very good friend. Him and his business partner Randy Vaudry kind of fostered me into this field after I got my degree. Um, yeah, just been here ever since. Pretty much didn't look back. Nice. Well, nice. Before we get into all that, tell us a little bit about you that I that I left out and your family and hobbies, and we'll go from there. Well, I'm 46 years old. I, I have uh, four children. Uh, my youngest was she's she's just this wonderful little two year old. Just turned two in September. She was our surprise. 20 year gap between her and the next child. So <laughs> quite quite a surprise. God God had something in store for us we didn't expect. So that's the that's the most wonderful thing in my life right now. Uh, I enjoy a lot of physical activity. Um, don't mind don't mind hard work, but love to play too. Uh, mountain biking, hiking. I love to just go up in the mountains. Uh, sometimes just all alone for a couple of nights. Uh, those seem to be my passions. Uh, mostly physical things. Did some Spartan races and things like that. Um, way way back, did a bodybuilding show once. Uh, wasn't my bag necessarily in the end, but as part of this profession and what I do, it's good to. Kind of experience a lot of different sure. athletic areas and areas of nutrition uh, in application outside of medicine and inside medicine. I like it. Well, Jared knows his stuff. He, you know, a long time ago when I was actually serious about my health, he helped me get to where I needed to be <laughs> to be competitive in some Spartan races. Uh, he, I, he knows he's always there to kick my butt once in a while when I need to. Absolutely. But uh, <laughs> he definitely knows what he's doing. He, there's a, there's a easy working with him. So if, you, if you're looking for someone to help you on your weight loss or just general health journey, this is your guy. So thanks for being on the show, Jared. Before we get into all that, I need to take a sponsorship time out because we are still sponsored by Dell's Outdoor Advertising and there's not a better way up and around town to get your uh, message across with a good billboard. So call Rob at 208-232-6886. And if you sign up for three months on a billboard and mention the podcast, they'll give you the first month for free or your installation for free. So uh, that's, that's that. And Jared, let's get, let's get back to you. So you've been, you've been doing this since you graduated. Dr. Willie's, uh, you know, we all know Dr. Willie in this community. You know, he's, we've got to get him on the show, by the way, too. So tell him I'm coming after him. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll have to work on him on that one. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Um, but yeah, you know, Dr. Willie, you know, he's been a bodybuilder doctor. He's just, he knows he's all about health. So, um, yeah. So you, you, what has drawn you towards this industry, Jared? You know, my own experience, uh, back in the, I hate to admit it, but way back in my late teens and, and early twenties, when I knew everything, <laughs> I, uh, I had a horrible lifestyle. I didn't know anything about nutrition. I worked uh, in a mechanical profession, worked on large machinery. Um, I destroyed my body, body with literally beer, corn dogs, and chain smoking. Um, my genetics aren't that great. It was a smart idea to begin with, but eventually um, fear got a hold of me. I, I think it's God's graces that I ended up where I am within this field, but I changed lifestyle out of fear and did what everybody else does, which is fumble around in the dark, uh, using this diet, that diet, too much time in the gym, crash dieting, yeah, just all sorts of different things. Even was on the Fen Fen diet way back then. That dates me. Not everybody knows what that is at this point, but 
Um, I got that from a doctor, did that for a couple months, just a lot of different experience and different things. And I actually did lose weight. I got healthier maintaining it uh, as anybody that's ever tried lifestyle change can understand. Uh, maintenance is the hardest part. And I, I decided I was going to change my profession, change my whole life, uh, leave the town I, I had for the most part grown up in, leave my old profession, take all the money I had and go to college. So uh, I, I decided to become a dietitian. And I figured that the university setting would have all the right answers, fill in all the holes for me. And I'd come out of there knowing everything, basically. Um, it wasn't so. Uh, as far as the degree goes, ISU has a top rated dietetics program and it's a great program um, in terms of learning things like nutritional biochem, food service systems management, all that kind of stuff. Uh, great for that experience, and I don't regret the degree, but it's fairly tunnel vision in the application. Uh, the idea that there's one diet that fits this whole population just doesn't hold water. Yep. Uh, and the, the government standard diet, of course, is very, very industry pushed. The marketing machine behind it is very, very effective. So I went back to that style of a diet. And by my last year in college to become a dietitian, I was in better shape, but I'd gained 75% of my body fat back. I was becoming an, a health professional and gaining weight. And that year was the year that I wrote, read, read one of Dr. Willie's books. He's an odd doc. Most doctors have half a semester of nutrition. He's been writing books on it since the 90s. I got a hold of a book uh, called What Does Your Doctor Look Like Naked? Uh, the title's based on the premise there's nothing sadder than the sick health professional. And that book kind of rang my bell. And I, from there, I just considered it God's graces. I got the opportunity to corner that guy in a locker room. And six months later, he hired me. Uh, spent a couple years under his wing learning to do what I do now and then eventually learning to read labs, at least parts of labs uh, pertinent to the nutrition components of that. Um, and over the years have learned how to use just about any valid type of diet um, depending on the person. So we don't have one diet fits all. Uh, we can use ketogenic diets, high carb, low carb, intermittent fast, uh, even crash dieting when it's medically necessary, uh, just about any diet you can think of, we can apply based on the individual needs of the person, the medical conditions, the past history, uh, and that isn't always weight loss. That's a plethora of other, other issues. Um, so that whole process is what led me to where I'm at and, and develop the passion that I have for this field. I have a very big personal interest in keeping me and my family healthy in the long term, and teaching other people is, is just a major part of that. I like it. I like it. That's people, you know, that's, that's the, I think the main thing in our, in our society right now is people are constantly trying to, you know, my wife calls me the professional dieter. So, you know, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of those. <laughs> I get, I go where I want to be and then I, I give up or I'm, or I get stressed or whatever. And uh, pe people do things for all sorts of different reasons, but I think dieting come to realizing just more is a lot more mindset as well too because you have to find that within yourself find that why why you want to get healthy before yeah. you can get healthy yeah i think there needs to be a little bit of healthy fear in that mm -hmm. um, i found with most people just just a little bit of a, a healthy fear and a, a true desire to change because it's in the end it's not about following a specific diet it's about changing your way of thinking like you said it's in the mind how you think about food, how you look at the marketing behind our food industry, how you, you look at food prep and your family's eating. Um, I, I think in terms of the food industry that the marketing machine has been so powerful that a lot of us have a very, very skewed perspective on what healthy eating really is. And it, it shouldn't always be about weight loss. There's, there's a lot of different things that, that are involved when it comes to thinking about your food and thinking about your lifestyle and how you're gonna spend your last 20 years on this earth once you finally retire and can enjoy life a little bit. What's your body gonna be like? Yeah, yeah, that's a big thing to worry about too is just yeah, having a body that has something left in the tank to enjoy yeah. yourself after you saved all this money to retire and then you only have a couple of years of good health you gotta you gotta prolong that so yeah i'll tell you that's that's one of my long-term motivators is, is what what are things going to be like for the rest of my life and i sometimes have to stop and think really should it be this hard to think about my food to to prep my food and and, and stay healthy at least from the nutritional and physical activity part of it should it be this hard 
Yeah. And the answer is yes. I mean, if you really want to, to have some fuel left in the tank, you want to enjoy a, a high quality of life and, and be successful. Um, you got to be healthy to be successful in all ways, really. Yeah, you do. You do for sure. I like it. So Jared, what, what are some of the common like myths that you, you see in your industry that people come in with? You know, one of the biggest ones is, is that you got a lot of different diet programs out there that promote their diet. And in, in that perspective, most of them, not all of them, uh, the government standard, I guess, is the, the biggest example of this, but um, diets that promote their diet fits everyone. There's no such thing. That's yeah. a myth. There's no diet that fits everybody in this population. Um, there's certain things about the way food works in your body and how it affects hormones that are the same for everyone. But in terms of specific diet, I think that's a huge myth. Um, so, you're, second, wait, so you're saying, so saying everyone couldn't be a vegan or everyone can't be a, a keto oh, person. That exactly what you're saying? Right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just want to exactly. get that out there. <laughs> not, not everyone should be a vegan. That's, that's the truth. Yeah, and, and ketogenic diet. It, of course, some people should be on a ketogenic diet for the rest of their lives. Uh, usually there's a medical reason behind that. It's not just weight. And uh, whether it was a high carb or low carb diet, again, it's, it's dependent on circumstances. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I think another one of my big pet peeve myths is that fat is bad. It's that myth is getting phased out more and more, but there's, it's, it's still very prevalent uh, and I think one of the worst bits of nutrition advice we've ever gotten from a government entity was to go on a low fat diet. There, there's just horrible consequences behind that. Um, so that's, that's another big myth too. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, I don't think people realize the, the difference between good fats and bad fats, you know, so. Right. Right. Well, that's interesting. So if people come to you and, and, and they, they don't really know where to begin and they're, they're lost and they're frustrated and they, you know, are a professional dieter like me. What, what would be what would be your first uh, course of action with those type of people? First course of action is to get familiar with their history, their their current diet. Of course, doing measurements as part of a, a initial visit, an initial startup is uh, number one. Disingrain the idea that a goal weight is the most important thing about their program. Uh, looking at, at the body and health from a wider perspective. In terms of measurements, that means body fat percentage, maybe a strength measurement, a waist and hip circumference, and some simple anthropometric measurements as part of it. Also, uh, what's realistic about their food intake, what in their life is, is going to dictate the need for one direction or another in terms of nutrition education. And then, of course, get a history of how they eat now. Um, I got to kind of get a perspective on, on what a person already knows, what they're doing now, what they've done in the past, possible uh, medical conditions that they may be fighting with are usually a, a part of that. Uh, many of the people, I, I'd say 95% of the people I work with come from medical providers that are being referred by primary care. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't work with everybody else. You don't have to be referred by a doctor. But we're usually looking over the medical aspect of it as well before we decide what the initial approach is gonna be. Um, and then from there, supply a couple of meal plans, just as examples. Uh, my, my way I practice does not focus everything around meal plans because they are finite tools. Nobody's gonna to follow a meal plan for the rest of their lives. Yeah. Um, but we use those things as tools and then it's ongoing education. The person should follow up as often as they need to to get the accountability and support that they need. Um, continued education, I think, is the most important thing about the visits mm -hmm. is, is educate people as they go so that they can become their own nutrition expert in terms of their body. Um, and then I encourage people to follow up every every month or so, three to four weeks. Some people follow up every week. Some people it's further out than that. But generally about every three to four weeks, I have them follow up and do continued support, further meal plans, further measurements. And and we roll with the punches um, in terms of what a person's body is doing with our approach. Nice. Well, that's important. I hope you everyone out there is listening, you know, especially coming to the end of the year, you got some new year's resolutions. This guy is your man to talk to. Um, you, you, they're just you. Low, you're, you're, unfortunately you're located right next to uh cold stone ice cream so <laughs> yeah it's a rude place to put a nutrition program 
you just get done taking measurements and you walk out and that, you know, birthday surprise cake is oh yeah look in the eye. So yeah, you know, we, we ended up in this office, uh, the the medical providers, the doc, Dr. Willie and his business partners that own owned physicians immediate care in both locations, Chubbuck and Pocatello. Uh, also on the building that my office is now in. I spent about eight years in the clinic. Uh, they, we build insurance for everyone. And unfortunately, insurance pays back for preventative health about 30% of the time when it comes to nutrition. And eventually, we had to just do a, a retail model. So we moved me out of the clinic. And this, this spot next to Cold Stone was a very good, visible place right across the parking lot from one of our clinics, making a very convenient uh, location for me. It's, it's uh, also located in the protein shop, which is a, a supplement store that the doc and his partners own. Um, so we've got two businesses in one doorway, both of which complement each other and complement the way that we practice medicine. Because um, we try to not use any more pharmaceuticals than necessary and have this, this fantastic marriage between Western medicine and a holistic approach where if we can do natural means, lifestyle change, diet, exercise, certain supplements, and avoid lifelong pharmaceuticals, then we do. So that's part of the reason that I'm in this location. It was just it, it just worked out well to be yeah. here. Well, perfect. Well, it is. It's very convenient. So go visit them over there, guys. So, uh, Jared, what's what's maybe three things you could leave our listeners with? Of like, okay, it's the holidays now. What are three things they can kind of do to just kind of maintain so they're not like packing on the holiday 20s or 30s? And uh, Oh, man, three things. I got to narrow it down. There's a long list of, of maybe stuff. Just, maybe just that. three of the real basics that, you know, even the worst dieters can follow or come close to. Okay, number one might surprise you. Number one is don't cheat yourself out of the holidays. Um dieting strictly through the holidays. I've done it myself before. I've seen many other people do it where they get motivated to do their lifestyle change early uh, and they want to not set themselves back 10 steps over the holidays. So uh, in, in the initial stages, they wisely start a diet program before January and they diet strictly all the way through the holidays, pull it off with flying colors. And at the end of the holidays, they feel, whether they believe it or not, emotionally cheated. We have, we have had these holiday foods and family events and, and usually joyous events throughout the, the, the cold part of the year when we're not getting much sunshine. It, we just, these, this is a source of emotional joy and satiation for people. And I've found that people tend to binge right after the holidays when they make it through the whole holidays dieting strictly. Hmm. So I would say don't necessarily plan on, on a bunch of weight loss over the holidays. Don't go backwards either, though. Yeah. So the second thing I would suggest on top of that is at the beginning of the holiday season, set yourself four or five events. Be realistic about it. Set four or five events. Maybe your Thanksgiving, uh, one work event, one family event, which could be coupled with one of the holidays, Christmas and New Year's. And decide to have either a free day or a free meal on every one of those events. Now, over that short of a period of time, that may not promote weight loss but if you take all of the goodies and and heartfelt wonderful homemade goodies and store-bought goodies and all these things that trickle into the office and trickle into your home and are right in front of your face if you can instead of telling yourself no say not right now i got a free meal coming up i'm gonna have some of that stuff then you're not very likely to be able to eat as much of that stuff if you would have as you would have if you had eaten it as it came to you Mm -hmm. um, so there's that that advantage too if you set these events the in between you don't eat like crap you don't eat everything in front of you you don't eat the goodies you try to eat a healthy diet but you've got those five events to look forward to and not feel cheated when you reach the end of the holiday season not having gained 15 pounds um, maybe even lost a little maybe just stayed where you were at caused some maintenance but you got to enjoy the holidays mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's the second one. The third one is don't be dehydrated. Yeah. I, I, that is just such a simple, but such a major thing. 
our brains are really good at telling us what we need. Our emotions are really good at telling us what we want. And those things cross over. People that uh, don't drink a whole lot of water go two hours without water and then guzzle 20 ounces to make it up. They pee too often. It's not realistic. They give up quick. Water's involved in so many different functions that it can affect cravings, muscle cramping, fatigue, sleep, uh, brain fog, all sorts of things. And we tend to go for food with all of these different feelings just because it's a natural thing. And our food industry has really helped that along. Um, and, and that incessant snacking, it, it just transcends willpower. We've got to be well hydrated. We've got to be well fed or willpower is overrated. So good hydration. Try to try to sip a, just get a few sips of water every 30 minutes, twice an hour. That's, a good, idea. That's a good idea. Well, perfect. There's, here you go, guys. Three, three things for you can start right now before you even see Jared. So give me some good advice there. Uh, thank you, Jared. Um, before we end, I always like to end with one last question. So Jared, what what was one of your favorite restaurants here in town that you like to eat at locally? You know, After honestly, I don't really ever go out to eat, <laughs> but I do like Red Lobster. Okay, really there you go. That's a, you can find some healthy options there, I'm guessing, or no? Yeah, yeah, you know, and I don't know, I'm totally healthy when I go out to eat, but I, you know, steak, uh, garlic, shrimp, vegetables, and then those those fantastic, horribly addictive little cheese biscuits they have there. <laughs> these things are evil, but yeah, if I'm if I'm going there to eat, I'm having four of those that I should. Yeah, you might as well have a cheat meal right there. So, perfect. Well, Jared. Um, as we come to the end of this episode, if people want to come see you and find you and get some your professional wisdom, how do they find you? Um, I, I would start just by calling my office, 254-7281. Um, again, my office is in the protein shop at uh, 475 Yellowstone Suite B. Um, phone number is great. Email is jared, J-A-R-E-D, at getwell, the number three, Dot com. Uh, our website right now is going to be shut down for a while. We're going to revamp it. it. It was a site that we were planning on charging people for, but it's going to be a free educational and dietary tool that we're going to just let everybody use. Nice. Um, so I'm not going to send you the website right now. Use either the phone number or my, my email. I'd be happy to schedule you. Perfect. Well, good. Well, Jared, thanks for coming on the show. And uh... Oh, also one more oh. thing. Uh, if you tell me that you heard about me on this podcast, um, I will do a half price visit on the first one. Actually, I'll, let's, let's do this. So my normal visit price is 50 bucks a visit. I'll do half price on the visit and down the road when you don't need full coaching sessions. If you just need accountability, need to come in for quick measurements. Um, those are just 15 minute visits. I'll give you one of those for free as well. So really good deal on a startup. There you go, guys, man. That's a, exactly what you want to hear right before the beginning of the year so go see jared call him now even if you're going to say hey jared i don't want to see you until the beginning of the year but i want to see you january 1 and he'll still take you so you yeah, may come in with your tail between your legs but he'll be happy to see you absolutely yeah pre-commitment is always fantastic i love it <laughs> i always call him i say jared about three months i'll be ready here so <laughs> just kidding all right. Well, thanks, Jared, for being on the show. You guys heard him right. Uh, he's going to give you some good deals if you mentioned that you saw him on the podcast or listened to him on the podcast, more likely. So, all right. Thanks, Jared. And uh, until next time. Thanks, Spencer. Keep, yeah. Keep down, download the, uh, the podcast so wherever you listen to and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. All right. See you later. Congratulations on spending a couple minutes getting just a little bit smarter, having some fun, and supporting the Pocatello business community. If you are feeling the love, make sure to subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you are.